Hi. My name is Game Webcam. Most of you probably know me as that guy who made Roblox on Linux tutorials. Or that guy who ranted once about Roblox temporarily killing wine support. BitDancer, one of the Roblox admins who was a huge proponent in getting Roblox working on Linux through wine, had announced that wine would be intentionally blocked on the Roblox client. First and foremost, I do want to thank him and the other Roblox staff who have put their foot forward trying to ensure compatibility between Roblox and Linux because if it weren't for their hard work, then Roblox on Linux wouldn't have lasted for as long as it did. When Roblox temporarily started working on Linux again after my last video, the first sign that got me wondering if it'll happen again was when Roblox pushed an update later that year that broke the client under vanilla wine. The people who were behind Vinegar HQ created their own patch that addresses the seg fault responsible for breaking Roblox. I mean, huge thanks to them and the Grape Juice team for making Roblox on Linux work for so long as well. But this patch did change some deep low-level code in Wine. It was fickle and any update to Wine had a chance of rendering the patch useless. I focused my tutorials on compiling your own wine so that wine took the best advantages of people's hardware in patches to get the most performance. The tutorial was already comprehensive and complicated enough, but if it stops working after a couple weeks because the patch decides to break, then it would just straight up be a bad tutorial. The people behind these Roblox compatibility programs have always offered pre-built wines with the necessary patches for this very reason, but I only wanted that to be a last resort if the situation didn't seem to improve. I was hesitant and that's why I decided to play the waiting game, and my predictions unfortunately became a reality. And here's the thing. I could go on another angry rant talking about how Roblox anti-cheat is the worst and that the higher-ups at Roblox are to blame for gatekeeping honest players from participating on their platform. But I know that won't do any good, simply because it's not only unprofessional, it would be bad faith, and I don't want to give Roblox another reason to justify their decision. I want to take this time to understand the importance of wine support and elaborate on a few more things since my previous video. First of all, people on Linux use wine because they want to use programs that would otherwise only run on Windows. Implementing an anti-cheat solution that purposefully shuts out Linux users is the antithesis of what wine was made for and you're probably thinking well maybe just don't play that game and maybe play something else that's compatible with linux this is the kind of mentality that is going to make people not use linux or lose any interest in trying if you want people to try out and use Linux, you need to accommodate their needs, which in the case of gamers, includes supporting the games they love playing. I've mentioned this before, the root problem though is fairly economical and political. Big corporations aren't going to be so prone to taking risks unless they see enough reasoning to make a calculated decision. This includes adding Linux support if you are a game developer or an executive behind a large game studio. But how do we get there if most users aren't willing to try out Linux because their favorite games aren't supported? You start to see how this quickly becomes a catch-22. Wine was, is, and will be the intermediate solution meant to solve this problem. It's sad because with the general quote-unquote Roblox outrage mob, they were more upset about mobile operating systems that were released almost 10 years ago or almost seven years ago losing support these are operating systems that only run on devices that have long since lost support from their manufacturers it's only fair that roblox stops supporting those systems to take advantage of features that hardware simply cannot run but cutting wine support affects an active and growing user base we've actively supported software and hardware 
Since Roblox is a platform that majorly consists of a younger audience, cutting Linux support stops younger users from learning and embracing new technology. I mean, I got interested in programming when I was 11 years old, and that all started because of Roblox Studio and the use of the Loba programming language. And if there's anything that big tech companies have learned from the past few decades, if they wanted to get their software and hardware out into the mainstream, well, you gotta introduce them when they are young. With my last video, I mentioned that most general anti-cheat solutions do in fact support Proton or Wine and make it easier for developers to enable. But I never stopped to think about why this support should be something that game developers have to opt in, rather than be something that developers have to opt out of. If anti-cheats like Easy Anti-Cheats in BattleEye are capable of supporting Proton, then why not have this be the default behavior? What I liked about Roblox and Bifron is that they did actually try to support Wine and explicitly decided to opt out of it. Why is this not the norm in the gaming industry? With the current opt-in system, you can make the argument that a lot of anti-cheats enabled games don't support Linux because the developers don't see it as a priority. But if you make developers have to opt out, it informs us that this was a conscious decision and it opens up the floodgates for a more transparent communication in understanding any shortcomings of Wine or Proton. Another issue that I want to dive a little deeper into has to do with a reason that Roblox developers cited to why they don't want to make a native Linux client. Um, I've also heard from a lot of people on the general game development side outside of Roblox that Linux tends to be the platform where the ratio between kind of the support requests and the amount of people using it is the highest just because of a very high fragmentation. Now, I'm very sure that this is a true thing, but let's explore why that might be the case. Here's the thing. A vast majority of the people who are going to be on Linux are going to have a much better understanding of technology than your average Windows user. And I'm sure that this will change in the future when Linux gets more market share, but let's focus on the now. Your average person would be on Windows or Mac OS. And here's the thing. Most of them do not care about how their machine or any of their software works. They just want to use their machines to get their work done or just sit down to have some entertainment. And it's because of this mindset that whenever they start to run into problems, they're not even going to bother figuring out what's wrong or try to fix it unless they're told how. And here's the thing, if it does happen to be a recurring issue, then they'll just mercilessly search on Google in the hopes of finding an answer. And if that doesn't work, then they'll stop using that software and either find an alternative, just simply not use it, or if it is something that is essential, they're just gonna make somebody else do it for them. But now let's look at a Linux user. Since most OEM devices don't ship with a Linux distribution, they had to figure out themselves how to get a distribution onto their machine. That already by itself is going to set them apart from your average Windows user. Because even if something as simple as that can be quite a learning experience. Not only that, they were willing to put in the effort and relearn how to use their computer again. And yes, there are distributions that make this process a heck of a lot simpler, but they still need to put some commitment into learning how to use their system. The most important detail to focus on is how desktop Linux and open source culture interconnect with each other. It is a part of Linux etiquette to embrace and use free and open source software, as Linux in of itself is free and open source. When you get to deal with open source software, you get to see the source code and even contribute to it. And one way of contributing to source code is by raising awareness of issues with the software. 
And considering that the developing experience on Linux is first class compared to other operating systems, it's no surprise that you're going to have a lot of people who will know how to report those issues when something isn't working. And that includes the necessary information to reproduce those issues and probably try and make it easier for developers to fix them. The Linux community is very insistent on getting people to try out the operating system It's seeing if it can replace Windows for their needs. It's a meme and it can be annoying at times. Trust me, I've been there. But it's that fighting spirit that Linux's adoption is slowly climbing, even if from a quick glance, it seems negligent. I mean, not too long ago, Linux passed 4% in desktop market share. I mean, remember when Linux passed 3% market share only just a year ago? Around the time when I made that rant video? And even with Roblox cutting wine support, a lot of the Roblox admins and maintainers still remain hopeful of the fact that Linux support on Roblox will come around eventually. And so do I. I honestly hope that in the near future, Roblox will come back to Linux in some way. Whether it's reintroducing wine support or the near improbable chance of getting a native client, Roblox is a platform that would certainly function as a gateway for many into Linux gaming, especially younger minds empowered by learning technology. I don't play Roblox as much as I used to, but I still enjoy playing on the platform every now and then. And having to reboot into Windows every time just to play a little bit of Roblox is a smear on what would otherwise be a fun gaming experience. And here's the thing, I only see dual booting as a temporary fix, not a permanent solution. Especially with the direction that Windows seems to be slowly heading towards, I wouldn't want to keep up the charade of switching operating systems because a software manufacturer abstains on making their software compatible with Linux. When that day comes, I certainly will not be continuing Windows. And I am confident I will be the only one who will come to that same realization. This is Game Webcam, and take care.